This is a chubby Chernobyl version of a Terranarsis, which means it's a big old fat salmon fly with a bunch of foam. But we use the right amount of orange on this. A lot of them are too orange. So check out this video to see how much orange you should really use. This is the fly, see it? Okay, I'm not gonna show it to you until you like and subscribe. In fact, Brigham said that if you like and subscribe, we can get an Instagram live video of him trying to do a backflip off the bed of his truck. So highly recommend doing that. Right, Brig? Okay, there is an issue with some of the salmon flies you see on the market. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna have old Brig pop up a picture right now of what a real salmon fly looks like. This is a salmon fly that was taken from southern Idaho, and you can see that it's it's not bright orange. But when we look at the fly bins in a lot of shops, and these are from our own shop, like we have this one, we've got this one, we've got this one which are great flies, but frankly, before I fish this one, I'd probably take a marker to it. So I think that one of the things with salmon flies is we can add way too much orange to them. So the, the critical part of salmon fly tying is to choose a color that matches your, your salmon flies in your, in your rivers close to you. And sometimes they're like black, they're gray, they're, they're dark brown. But for this video, we're going to do it with a, uh, a black. It's just going to be a chubby Chernobyl salmon fly or a chubby Chernobyl Terranarsis, whatever type of Latin you like to speak. I am going to tie it with orange thread because it's going to make nice little highlights throughout the fly if the thread shows through. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to dress the fly and I'm going to add just a little bit of crystal flash in typical chubby style. This is just black crystal flash. Tie some in, double it over. For the recipe guys out there, this is exactly 14 and a half strands of crystal flash. Uh, maybe, maybe not. All right, so once I have the crystal flash tied in, I'm going to take some dubbing. And for this, I've chosen Bruiser Blend. Little life hack, this is excellent dry fly dubbing. It's an acrylic fiber, doesn't absorb water. So keep that in mind. Mostly we just do streamers with it to build heads. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're just going to dub the whole hook shank. We're gonna dub it forward and back. And Brig, this is your cue to speed this up because it's gonna be boring as sh Okay, so as you can see, we built up a, a little bit of a profile. It doesn't need to be as fat as a normal chubby because the bodies on these salmon flies really aren't very thick. So as you can see, I left my thread a little bit forward from where the dubbing starts. Um, and I'm gonna make a little band of thread there. And I'm gonna tie in the piece of black. Just like that and I'm also going to tie in some brown so I'm going to cut that the other way and just tie that in that's just purely me I think it looks cool so so we have those tied in now a cool little hack if you want your body to kind of sweep up like this all you have to do is throw some super glue between these two and you know, kind of kick up the top piece of foam where you want it to be and then just push that back piece into it. And that will make that kind of curve up on the back of the fly. Let's see, so I'm, I'm building up a little bit of a band of thread. It just makes it easier to tie the wing and legs in if I do that. So I'm just gonna take generic black rubber legs, just regular old medium round rubber. I'm gonna take two legs, You've seen me tie in rubber legs a bunch of different ways. I'm just gonna tie them both on top, 
pull one to one side, one to the other, and boom, we have legs on our chubby. So I'm using EP trigger point fibers. You can use normal EP fibers. Um, I don't really like a super bright white wing on these. I want to tone it down. And that's why I like this trigger point. This is the, the pale morning dun color. It's just like a, a dirty white. So you need quite a bit of this. Um, and this, I'm going to tie it in probably, you know, this, this I'm going to fold back. So I want it to be about that long. So I'll tie that in. And instead of just folding it back like this, I fold it back and then maybe push it forward a little bit. And what that allows me to do is get bring my thread in here and grab that wing and mash it down. And what that does is it makes the wing prop back as opposed to just sticking straight up. So I'll trim that off. That's about the length of the back wing that I want. And then to ensure that those legs stay at the angle that we want, I'm going to take a little bit more of the dubbing and just put that through those thread wraps. And then I'll just wrap that over the top of everything. Then I'll add even more dubbing. So I'm going to put a layer of dubbing, a real thin layer of dubbing over the top of the rest of the dubbing and take that forward. So once I'm about to here, this is where my orange will come into play. I've just chosen an orange ice dub. You can use whatever orange dub you like. I like this because it pretty much stays the same color once it gets wet. So I'll dub that up nice and tight. And just make a little kind of orange hot spot. So this is just to kind of tell the fish that hey I'm a salmon fly because I do have some orange on me and uh, that's all we'll do right there. So from here I'm just going to pull these foam pieces over, tie those in and if you if you cinch too tight at the get-go of tying these foam pieces in, you can cut right through them. So start with medium tension and then get tighter as you wrap in. So as you can see, that's a real nice clean uh, thread band here. So I'll do the same thing I did in the back, some chunky legs and a wing. Same clump of hair, but this time it's going to be quite a bit longer in the front because it's going to go over and kind of meet up with the back wing. So a few turns of thread, same technique in the front where I'm going to push it forward. I'll hammer down on that wing. And I'm going to trim it off about right there. So if you took your scissors and made a cut like this, it would hit both wings right at the same spot. All right. Brigham, what'd you do with my black dubby? Never mind. Brigham didn't do anything. All right. So I'm going to put a little band of dubbing over the top of my thread. And again, this is this is personal preference and you know, effective fishing that has led me to leave a lot of the orange out of the body. From here, I'm going to add a tiny little bit more dubbing on so I can wrap this up to the eye of the hook. And then once I get to the eye, I will build up another little orange hot spot right at the head. From here, somebody gave me the midge whip finisher for this giant fly, so wish me luck. Brigham told me that this one was there. Boom. See that, Brigham? Okay, we've got that all trimmed up. 
I'm now going to trim the head just whack just like that I'll take off the edges here because we're being fancy today these angled cuts on the front and back probably have no effectiveness at all but I think it looks cool and then these legs might be a little long so the best way to trim legs I'm going to take the two or the front legs just push them all forward and just kind of smack them all at the same time and then I can use those front legs to gauge the back legs and then the last thing I like to do is take this fancy comb and just kind of run it through the hair see I, I, I had some that was a little tangled in there so I can pull that back and give it another trim but anyway that is the salmon fly version of a chubby Chernobyl with plenty of dark colors for you